So James, welcome to the Beat TV leadership event here in London. Delighted to have you with us. Thank you. Tell us a bit about Publica, first of all, just so for the audience, who, so you understand what you guys do. Sure. So Publica is a connected television ad server, and we focus on two goals, uh, maximizing revenue for our publishers and perfecting the user experience for our end users. Okay. So we're here talking about CTV advertising today, obviously a very hot topic at the moment. There are some people in the industry saying that the kind of cookie degradation issues, the challenges with identity resolution in the digital space are driving people into CTV yeah. and the CTV doesn't have the same problems. Are you on that page? Yes, so connected televisions don't have cookies. We have IFAs, identifiers for advertisers. So, and we, we don't see that same problem, right? We don't have that deprecation. Um, publishers and OEMs want to keep those in place. So we, we're not seeing that at all. I see 95% coverage where I'm at right now, and it, it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. And, and IFAs will help you to identify someone at a device level. Yep. But obviously, we still have issues around devices resolved to people, resolved to households. That's right. So a household will generally have one to maybe three televisions. And it's difficult, you're right, to know who's watching at the time. Um, we're working with partners like Comscore and Nielsen who are decoupling the household. They already know who lives there and based on the content that's being watched, they're able to tell the ad server who it is with a certain probability that, that's watching that content. So we've seen huge growth in the CTV advertising space and a bewildering array of acronyms in terms of content. Fast, streamers, we've got the OEMs with their own brand services. What's really driving growth? You know, what are they doing to try and grow? Yeah, so the biggest growth that we've seen is with programmatic first partners. So Samsung TV Plus, Pluto TV, they've, they've come into the market really and, and jumped in full force where it's the programmatic that they're going first and then direct will supplement, right? Um, the majority of the buys are still going to happen in PGs or PMPs, but um, the the problem of scaling that out right now are the broadcasters or traditional television that's going out of their traditional linear experience and doing it all direct sold and you know they they might not know what's on the other side of, of dipping into programmatic and they they fear that they're going to be devaluing their inventory or maybe serving ads that they don't want to serve next to their content but um, that's, that's been a problem that's been solved on desktop and mobile before and with high-end publishers like New York Times. Like it, it all happens today. Um, so having, having it happen in CTV is the clear next step for me. So, 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 and just to be clear then, so what is the value add for broadcasters of embracing that wider programmatic ecosystem? Yeah, so it democratizes the spend, right? You can, you can buy through different channels. The buyers can buy however they want, uh, which, which ends up maximizing CPMs overall. Got you. Okay, so programmatic is evolving quite quickly. Yep. We've got new standards, and I think Publica and some of your peers and colleagues have been involved in developing the new OpenRTB 2.6. That's right. Tell us about why that's important. What does it do? Yeah, so there's a couple things on, on OpenRTB 2.6 that are really important. Um, first of all, I just want to call out that it's not OpenRTB 3.0 that didn't get a lot of adoption. So 2.6 is a point release for a reason. It's backwards compatible with 2.5 that everybody's using. Um, but the two main things that I would focus on are potted requests. So you're, you're shrinking a, um, an ad break and all of its ads individualized. You're, you're shrinking that from one request per ad to one request per ad break. Right, so you're, you're making it so that the entire ecosystem is, is smarter and more efficient, and that's also going to help with competitive separation. So potted requests are huge. Uh, one more thing I want to call out is CPM per second. Um, a lot of desktop and mobile publishers talk, you, talk to you about maximizing CPMs. It's not the same thing when you talk about video because you're selling airtime. So the CPM per second is a much better Thing to use because you're looking at $15 for 15 seconds versus $15 for 60 seconds, and that that type of optimization isn't isn't there right now with 2.5. So the other big question, which has haunted, I guess, the CTV space, is frequency management. Yep. And again, I think you guys have been pretty public that you think that problem has been solved or is solvable. Tell us a bit about how you've solved it. 
Yeah, so we've solved it for CTV, where we will deduplicate based on the advertiser domain, the IAB category, or the media file URL itself. Um, there's the, the issue of reach and frequency when it comes to cross-device. That's a little bit tougher to tackle, but for connected television as a whole, we've, we've solved that problem, and it was actually solved even before I joined Publica a few years ago. And again, we, we spoke about this earlier. Do you, does, a, does a, an advertiser have to work solely with you, or a publisher have to work solely with you, or can they work with a variety of ad servers and still get the kind of frequency management? Yeah, that's a great question. So, the publisher doesn't have to work solely with Publica, but Publica has to be responsible for constructing the ad break. Otherwise, when we pass it off to somebody else, we don't have control over what's being deduplicated and what's not. Got you. So it requires some sort of collaboration in terms of who's managing and overseeing. That's right. Got you. Okay. Um, context, I guess, is the other interesting yeah. issue at the moment in the CTV advertising space. I was really surprised when I got to the States that so much CTV is being bought against context or genre, essentially. Yep. Um, tell us why you think it's, it's a valuable way of buying ads. Yeah, so it really takes us back to the roots of advertising where you know a, a billboard is in a certain community or there's a certain ad in a certain print magazine or newspaper and that's, that's how advertising started and it started there for a reason and it was use, useful for a reason. Um, that's going to continue and it's not just content genre. The, the IAB has a bunch of content genre, content rating, content network. You have all of these things that you can contextualize um, and that's really just the tip of the iceberg. You can really do frame by frame contextualization also in the future and that's going to be a game changer. So the other hot, hot buzzword at the moment I guess is server side ad insertion. Yeah. I, my recollection is we talked about it a lot a while ago then we stopped talking about it. Yeah. I think you guys think we're going to start talking about it again. That's Why? Right. Well, the, the, con the conversation on SSAI has continued because of the fraud. It, it's the easiest place for fraud to happen in connected television because you can spin up a server somewhere and say you are an environment that you're not. Um, but with AdCert 2.0, which we worked with the IAB Tech Lab on, um, we can make sure that that handshake happens between an SSAI and a buyer so that we know that it's a valid SSAI, like that's a trusted source of the inventory. Okay, final question yeah. then. What kinds of innovation do you think we're going to see in the ad serving space during the next couple of years? Yep. There's obviously lots of scope. What, what excites you and interests you at the moment? Yeah, so I'm interested right now in new formats. Um, and they're not new when you look at linear television. But for connected television, looking at a side-by-side -side ad break or a picture-in-picture, -picture, that can be really innovative in this space. And I'm, I'm looking at things like I've been watching the World Cup over the past few weeks. And you watch a whole half of football and you don't see a single ad, right? You, you see the entire content, which is great for the end user. Uh, but there, there is some space there where we can do what I've seen also happen in, with the World Series and the MLB, where they'll pop out to a side-by-side. -side. You'll see a six-second ad. Great branding. Very, it's not invasive, and you get the monetization from that as well. So format's going to be really important. Um, contextualization of the ad break, also really important. We saw that ITV did this last month. They put out a news release for it. Um, and what that is, is you get, as I was mentioning before, the frame-by-frame -frame analysis of the content. So you can say there's a wedding, there was a murder, if you want to avoid something. right? You get all of the contextualization so the buyer wow. knows what it is that they're going to be buying next to. That's really exciting. There's yeah. lots of interesting opportunity. Yeah. Well, look, James, thank you so much for sharing yeah. some thoughts with us. Thank you. Pleasure to see you. Yeah, you as well. Thanks, John.